Hey everybody, it's Brian House here for Housework and today I just want to do a real quick recap of the 2x72 belt grinder build that I put together uh, and put a video out. If you haven't watched that video, I'll put a card up in the corner so you can go click through and watch it. Um, basically, this is a uh, design from DC Knives. I don't know if you've uh, Googled plans for a 2x72 grinder before, but if you do, you'll come up on um, Dan's site and he put together a pretty simple uh, system for assembling one of these on your own. Now I did cheat a bit and I bought the platen and the wheels from Origin Blade uh, out in Oregon, Origin Blade Makers. Those guys are amazing. Um, I don't have the ability to make the wheels. Um, I don't have a plasma cutter, so I can't make the platen, you know, stuff like that. I just felt like, you know, for a hundred dollars, I could go out and just have one of these shipped in. And these are guys that have been making them for a really long time. So uh, I just felt confident that that was the right move for me. I also did use a treadmill motor and a lot of people have asked me questions about that and I'll answer those in a minute. But first I wanted to go over some of the design flaws. In the video you saw that I had a fan that was spinning here that was inside of this enclosure. I have since removed that and uh, just went with the fan that came with the SCR motor controller. Again, that is a 10,000 watt SCR motor controller. I know some people have said that they've had torque issues with those, and I can kind of see where they're coming from talking about uh, torque issues, but nothing that's really affected me grinding steel or wood, so I'm, I'm not really too concerned about that. I did buy a reusable horsehair filter from Walmart, cut it up, and put some magnets on the bottom so that uh, it would filter any dust that might fall down into the unit. I also did add some magnets all around the unit. I own a computer repair shop, so uh, these are just simple magnets that come from hard drives that we recycled. I did uh, have a really strong magnet for magnet fishing that I put down here right where a lot of the dust collects, and I thought that was a pretty uh, important thing. Um, some people on Instagram had messaged me, um, a buddy of mine, Mike, had said, you know, hey man, you're gonna have problems with metal dust. This, these things create an enormous amount of dust so magnets are really the way to go, and he was right on with that. Um, the other part of the dust situation is I used a candy container like this one. It's not pretty, but it works to go over the uh, fan that pulls air into the DC motor. Uh, remember, DC motors are basically really large magnets with brushes and armature inside, so anything metallic that gets sucked in there is going to settle into the bearings and the armature and fry the motor. As you can see, I did some temperature testing on the motor. I ran the motor for about 30 minutes consistently under load, and you can see it gets up into the one, mid-120s. Um, upper 120s, which I felt was pretty comfortable as far as the heat goes. I think it, you know, even hovered around 121, 122 for a period of time there, and I was really comfortable with that. Uh, one thing you do want to watch out for with these is them overheating. They do have a thermal switch on them. I have since removed that thermal switch because I didn't feel like I needed it. Uh, you know, so it's something to just kind of keep an eye on when you do this. Again, for the price, you can't beat it. I paid $80 for the entire treadmill, and I sold just the motor controller on eBay for $70. So, you know, I have $10 into this whole thing. So, you know, it's not a, a big deal if it were to fail. Not that I want it to fail, but, you know, price-wise, eh, I'm okay with it. Uh, also, I added a locking nut to the tensioning wheel. When I bought it from Origin Blade Makers, they, for some reason, didn't include a locking nut. They included just a regular nut, so it's a half inch nut, and I went to Ace Hardware and bought that, and a couple of extra half inch spacers made for uh, my tracking a little bit easier. Also, I had some questions about the spring. I bought a four inch, 30 pound spring from Ace Hardware, just threw it down into the tensioning pillar cavity and threw the pillar on top of it and that seems to tension this thing perfectly. I have not had any issues with that. I also put a scribe line on the platen arm so that I have a reference point when I pull and push that arm in for tensioning. I know that that scribe mark is about where I need to be. And if I need it a little bit tighter, I pull it a little more. And if I need it a little looser, I push it a little more. So that seems to work out pretty good for me. I also picked up one of these rubber belt cleaners. That was a pretty awesome purchase. Um, you know, when I'm doing woodwork or whatever and the, the belt gets all clogged up, this cleans it up really nicely. 
Um, I also added a couple of spots down here for dust collection. I have a one and a half horse dust collector in this shop and for collecting wood dust that makes a lot of sense so I just went ahead and drilled and tapped a couple of holes and added some nice knobs just to kind of hold that in place. Also I added some rubber leveling feet. I didn't really film that in the last video uh, but it is nice because if you want to have a reference point and you want to make sure that your grinder is in fact level, you can do that with just adjusting the nuts that are, or the bolts that are holding those rubber feet in place. And I've got a couple of questions about the tracking. Uh, I feel like the tracking is pretty good on this. I, you know, don't have a lot of reference point as far as what tracking should be, but um, I get just a slight bit of horizontal wobble on this belt and uh, I'm not really sure if it's the cheap belts that I bought on Amazon I bought a six pack of these 36 grit belts I think for like eight or nine dollars so I'm not really sure if it's the belts or if it is in fact something going on with my tracking a lot of comments about the flywheel not being two inches wide um, you know does that mess with the tracking does it mess mess with the belts I haven't seen the belts tweak at all I haven't seen any result of of that actually being bad I used Loctite to hold that flywheel on. So if I decide to, I could swap it out for a two inch drive wheel that could sit right on the treadmill motor itself. That's probably a better option. Although the cheaper and easier option is what I did and just is use the flywheel that came on the treadmill motor itself. That was a, a pretty uh, cheap and easy way to do it. One other question I got a lot of on this video was, how much did this cost me to make? Well, I would say total, if I didn't sell the motor controller from the treadmill, I'd have just about $300 into this. And that's buying the Platin and uh, wheels on eBay. I also bought the, uh, from Origin Blade Maker, I bought the, um, the, the rest, the uh, work rest. Uh, this was like 12 bucks. The steel was $153 shipped. Um, some knobs and things like that. Uh, you know, hardware is kind of expensive. So yeah, I mean, I've got probably about $300 into this build. I recycled a lot of parts. I had some of the wiring myself. Uh, now, when you take the motor controller sale into the, into the equation, that's a little bit uh, $70 off of that price. So you're looking at $230. I don't know where, where in the world you could get a grinder like this for $230. Um, it's an amazing piece of equipment. It's proven to be super useful in my shop and I really enjoy having it. So for, for that kind of money, I feel like it was an awesome build. I have seen some people take weight benches and use that for steel on these. Uh, that's an awesome idea. I looked around for a weight bench in my town. Um, I could not find anything that was equivalent to what I would want that was, you know, made sense price wise. So for $153 to buy all of the steel from uh, Metals Online or Metals Depot, wherever I got it, uh, made sense to me. And also, you know, this, these fit in there perfectly. And so, you know, you've got a one and a half inch steel tube that fits inside of a two by two tube. If you grind the seam down on the inside with a file, these fit so nicely, they slide in and out and perfectly, you don't have a lot of play. Whereas with Dan's design, he used 0.188 or 3 16 of an inch thick wall for his main body of steel. And when I bought those pieces, um, I just felt like there was so much play that I probably would get a lot of wobble and jiggle on this thing. Um, so I went back and ordered on, online the, the two, uh, the quarter inch thick wall two by two. I filed the welds and everything slid together really well. So it worked out for me. Not to say that Dan's design wouldn't work for someone else. I just felt like I was, if I was going to spend all this time making this thing, I really wanted to make sure that I was doing it. Um, so that this thing would last me a long time and I wanted to be able to beat the hell out of it and not have a whole lot of problems with it. So also uh, I found a new spot for this. It's actually not going to live on my project table here. It's going to live in the uh, back corner of my shop. So in order to move this without throwing my back out, uh, I actually take it apart. So I just wanted to show you how that actually works. Pop the belt off, 
Tensioning pillar just slides right out. That's a pretty simple thing. And then loosen this one knob and the platen arm comes right out just like that. And this whole thing becomes fairly easy to move. It's, it's a little heavy, but let me show you where the new home is. Also, I added a couple of hooks down here under my workbench that's holding the 2x72 for the grinding belts themselves. What I'm quickly learning is that not all grinding belts are the same. So buying them on Amazon, I've kind of learned that maybe that's not the best choice. Or if you do buy them on Amazon, make sure you buy the higher quality grade ones. Um, for now, these will work, but uh, you know, yeah, I think it's worth it to spend a little extra money and get the good stuff. If you have any more questions for me, I always read and respond to all the comments. So go ahead down into the comments section and do that. And also, if you enjoyed this video and the 2x72 grinder video, leave me a thumbs up and a subscribe. It would mean a lot. It helps out a lot on my channel a lot. And also, there's links down in the description of everything that I purchased to make this happen. Also, their sizes and, you know, all the cuts and everything that I made. I've considered putting out plans for this, and maybe I'll do that and release them out to you guys. If uh, enough people want that, I can draw up something in uh, Photoshop just so you guys can see all the exact dimensions. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. My name is Brian House, and this is Housework. Myself wandering.